Mina san konnichiwa. Ano ni san junin en ano online oso ryugak fe Heidelberg Daigaku no webinar des. Etto Heidelberg Daigaku Kyoto office no shenk to moshimasu. Mina san yoroshiku negai shimasu. Ano kyo no ano Q&A support suru kata wa ano Heidelberg Daigaku Kyoto office no assistant no iki des. Chato konnichiwa. Yoroshiku negai shimasu. お願いします。今回あのハイデルベルク大学のあのちょっと紹介したいと思うんですけど、その後であのハイデルベルク大学のあの学ぶの方法についてちょっとちょっと話しますの後であのQ&Aのためにあの時間があります。あの今回あのドイツ日本アメリカと韓国の方が参加するからあのそのメインプレゼンテーションの方あの英語でやっていますそしてもうちょっとだけあのドイツ語できる方もあの挨拶したいと思います。um, guten Tag, willkommen zum Webinar uh, der Universität Heidelberg auf uh, der diesjährigen EHEF. Um, ich freue mich sehr, Sie begrüßen zu dürfen. あの、言語の方ね、あの、Q&A の方、あの、あの、英語、日本語、ドイツ語もOK です。その、Q&A のために、あの、Zoom の、Q&A、ボタンを使ってください。well, uh, again, in English, uh, welcome to everyone. Um, as I said, I will hold the main presentation in English and you're free to ask questions um, um, in um, Japanese, um, German and um, English at the end of this presentation. So let me uh, talk about Heidelberg uh, University in, uh, in more detail. So Heidelberg University is the oldest university uh, in today's Germany. It has been founded in 1386. And today it's a university of international reputation. So our most famous subject areas are, for example, uh, law, medicine, but we have also an expertise in the humanities and the social sciences. Uh, it's a so-called comprehensive university. That means that there's a very broad spectrum of subjects. And um, you, we can also look back on a long history in which uh, we have also 10 Nobel, Nobel Prize laureates. Heidelberg uh, University um, is um, spread out on different campus areas. So the um, so-called Mannheim campus, where medicine and also the Central Institute for Mental Health, for example, are located at, is actually in the neighboring city of Mannheim. So that's about 20 minutes by train. Um, the so-called Bergheim campus, it's located in a uh, historical uh, hospital area that's had, that has been remodeled to, to university buildings. Our youngest campus is actually, uh, so youngest by uh, the buildings there, it's actually Neuenheimer Feld campus, uh, where the natural sciences and medicine are located. And there's also the so-called um, Old Town campus. So the Old Town campus, it's not like you probably know it from a university um, in uh, Japan, so it's not really closed up. So the university grew into this uh, old city and you have to imagine when you're walking through town, then you walk past a shop and a restaurant and then maybe next to it, there's a building of the university. And for you, if you're coming to Heidelberg as students, uh, that also has an advantage. So actually, uh, Heidelberg University supports also uh, um, the um, Edurome Wi-Fi system. So throughout the old town, there's a very good coverage of free Wi-Fi by university. Um, a few words about our library. It's a top library in Germany, so you can find a broad range uh, of uh, books covering almost every subject. Um, the um, there's also a um, collection of century old uh, manuscripts and among them there is the most valuable German manuscript, the so-called uh, Codex Manesse. 
So um, there's a small exhibition, so you can look at a copy because the original so valuable is kind of locked away safely. Um, but there's also a great effort to digitize um, all those historical sources. So please also have a look at the online resources uh, that are available to you as a student and you can find um, many of those um, valuable manuscripts also there. So what's special about Heidelberg University? Well, it's a top university in Heidelberg. So in the international rankings, we are usually number one or number two, depending on the ranking in Germany. So actually most of the time we're the best university in Germany. And there's a strong local network of research facilities to name a few, they have several Max Planck Institutes, there's the German Cancer Research Center, for example. Um, Heidelberg has, and the university has a pretty international atmosphere. And at the university, you'll find that an increasing number of classes are taught in English. And of course, probably you know that already, but um, Heidelberg is of course also a, a tourist destination and you have the chance to study in the uh, beautiful and romantic setting of the historic city of Heidelberg. And still, even though it's a tourist destination, living costs um, are pretty reasonable still, and um, the environment is pretty safe and secure. A few more words about studying in Heidelberg. Um, so we have a little less than 30,000 students in the winter term 2019. So uh, the population of Heidelberg City, it's actually 160,000. So uh, students make uh, quite a large part um, of this uh, population. We have a focus on research, focus on research based teaching at Heidelberg University. So that uh, actually means that um, already at um, early stage of your studies, you're encouraged to develop your own project and start your own uh, research. Uh, as I said, we have a broad spectrum of subjects uh, and uh, 100 degree uh, and over 100 ET degree programs. Uh, so you can study um, different subject combinations and it's virtually really just um, very, very broad. Um, of course, we also offer a comprehensive support and counseling to all of our students and the International Relations Division will be happy to support also our international students. And there are also a number of extracurricular activities, uh, for example, sports, exercise, and there are opportunities to volunteer, and there are theater groups and all kinds of things, you name it, you will find it probably. And, um, targeted to international uh, students uh, in particular. There are also excursions to um, tourist destinations in Germany and also neighboring countries. So for example, uh, you could go to Neuschwanstein Castle with just paying a small fee because it's organized by the university. Uh, a few more words about the subject areas and courses. Um, so as I said, most subject areas are represented. Exceptions are uh, business and classical engineering. We have computer engineering though, or biomedical engineering, but like really building machines, it's uh, not one of our strong sides, except that uh, almost everything is represented. Then there's also a Japanese studies department and the subject Japanese art history at um, our university. So uh, for you as a Japanese speakers, this will be a great opportunity for language exchange um, and it will be easy to make friends. Um, at Heidelberg University, we follow a multidisciplinary approach. So um, there is the opportunity to not only focus on your own subject area, but uh, the opportunity to, to gain also key skills from different subject area areas. For example, maybe you want to study a topic in uh, area studies, but uh, you want to use methods from economics or from sociology. So um, that's something we um, actively encourage at Heidelberg University. If you want to get a um, greater overview of our courses, um, please see our online syllabus, the so-called Lehre Studium Forschung, LSF. 
Um, I think uh, Ms. Icky will post a, a link of the LSF uh, in the chat so you can have a look later on. And um, there you can also search for classes taught in English and for classes in different subject areas. A few words about Heidelberg University's international profile. So uh, for you, um, good to know is probably that uh, as an international student, you won't be alone in Heidelberg, at Heidelberg University. So uh, in total, in, two, in winter 2019, we had over 18% um, international students. If we go to the level of the doctorates, um, it's almost 30%. So uh, in fact, um, it's a really international place to, to study. Um, our network in Japan is also quite large. So uh, we have worldwide exchange agreements with more than 450 universities. Uh, 15 universities in Japan we are doing um, exchange with. And we have also 27 university partnerships worldwide. That means that we cooperate with those universities on several levels, uh, student exchange, uh, research and mobility, research cooperation, and so on. And three of those partner universities are also in Japan as part of the so-called German-Japanese Universities Alliance Hexagon, which has been founded in 2010. Uh, here's an overview of uh, our universities with exchange agreements in Japan. Uh, so if you're a student at one of these universities, uh, you may have the opportunity uh, to also come in our, to Heidelberg in our general exchange program. Uh, the universities mark with the star, those are the partner universities that are also part um, of the Hexagon Alliance. Heidelberg University also has a network of centers abroad. Uh, among them, the Heidelberg University office Kyoto, that's where I'm working. We have, our office has been founded in uh, 2015. So what we do at uh, the Heidelberg University office Kyoto is uh, maintaining partnerships with our uh, partner institutions uh, and uh, maintain the network in Japan and East Asia and try to find also new uh, cooperation opportunities. And we're also uh, organizing events or support joint events. And then uh, of course the uh, general assistance and counseling is part of our um, objective. Um, and we do that, for example, in the form of uh, participating in, uh, in affairs and conferences or study abroad fairs like uh, EF. And also uh, you can turn to us if you're looking for uh, advice about student life in Heidelberg or international um, um, intercultural preparation. So if you have any questions about daily life in Germany and so on. So um, I'd just uh, like to add a few words about uh, how Heidelberg University is dealing with uh, student and research mobility uh, in the current situation. So um, you might think about studying abroad, but um, as, as you know, um, there's a pandemic going on and it looks like it might um, still be a topic for quite a few months longer. So Heidelberg University's approach on, is, on this is uh, to conduct as much on-site study and research as possible safely, uh, depending on how the situation develops. So safety measures in class and at the research facilities or offices will be implemented, implemented and adjusted according to the development of the pandemic. So at the moment, um, we are, for example, we started to work from home as much as possible. Um, and uh, some um, classes may um, change so, or move online. So if you're considering to go abroad soon, so maybe in the coming year, please um, know that we also think that safe safety comes first. So Heidelberg University uh, welcomes um, exchange uh, new enrollment, research and mobility, 
but um, please also check back uh, with your home university, your supervisor if you're coming for a research stay, and maybe also with uh, your uh, family and friends so that you're sure that uh, with the conditions of the um, pandemic that will be okay for you personally. Uh, so uh, the studies at Heidelberg University, they are designed to be conducted on site. So there's no online only uh, program in place at the moment. Uh, so even if depending on the situation, classes may be canceled or they move online completely, um, you are like time zone wise expected to be in Germany if you wanna do a full course or a exchange um, year or semester at Heidelberg University. So if coming to Germany at the uh, in the current situation is not really an option. So think about postponing uh, your stay, um, make different plans, maybe go later next year or, or um, um, try to adjust your plans. But we would really be happy to welcoming you um, soon. So let's hope that everything develops positively in the next months to come. To where to find more information. Um, so uh, keep up to date with uh, travel restrictions and safety regulations. Uh, for example, uh, news, local embassy, the consulate general, and so on. So, and even check those out also after your arrival if the pandemic is still ongoing. Um, information can also be found on the website um, of Heidelberg University. Um, so we'd like to, we'll post a link about this um, in the chat. And uh, for inter exchange and, and international students, there's also material by the International Relations Division that will be provided if you decide to come here. So now the second part, um, I'll just briefly outline study opportunities at Heidelberg University. So as I said before, um, the maybe easiest option to come to Heidelberg University is if you're taking part in a department um, or general exchange program. Uh, you, you would apply through your own university uh, that has an exchange agreement with Heidelberg University. So there are the deadlines, rules and restrictions of your university apply. So at some universities, exchange with Heidelberg University is only for certain subject areas, or you may be asked to have certain um, language knowledge. Um, so from our side, um, you don't have to know German, for example, but your university might, might ask you to have some previous German knowledge. Um, benefit is that um, the reservation uh, that uh, the exchange includes a reservation for student housing, except for those in the department exchange and a waiver of the tuition fees. And there's also a preparatory German language class uh, offered one month prior to the start of the term and then also available during your studies. So if your German is not good enough, for example, to take classes in German, you can pick selected classes that are taught in English and then continue improving your German uh, during the term as one option, how to uh, organize your exchange semester or year. Then um, <coughs> for students from universities that do not have an exchange agreement with Heidelberg University, we would still be happy to welcome you. Um, so there's the opportunity to come to Heidelberg University as a short-term short so-called research student. The duration is uh, one semester or up to one year. And we will um, send you a link about uh, the detailed application procedure and documents. Um, but um, concerning the tuition fee, it depends um, <coughs> on which, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, there's a tuition fee, but uh, it can be exempted if you come to Heidelberg University as, an, as a research student. That actually means um, 
at all levels, uh, but uh, the point is that you don't earn any credit, so it's um, you come here for the experience, basically. Um, the first step is to be accepted by a supervisor in a, your desired field of field of studies, and he or she uh, will then also support um, your stay. Uh, language requirements in general would be German, um, but uh, there are um, exceptions. So if your supervisor um, kind of puts on the application sheet, yes, it's okay, he or she can come even if uh, she has, he or she doesn't have a German knowledge, that is okay. Um, there's also an opportunity for short-term exchange the International Summer School for German Language and Culture. So for those of you who are interested in learning German, so it's held annually and uh, the next will be held in uh, July and August 2021. Um, there are not only language classes, but also workshops and cultural activities where you can directly practice the German you learned in class. Uh, levels are from a beginner to advanced, even like um, classes for teachers of German to still improve uh, their language skills are offered in this uh, summer school. Please, for more information, go to the website we put in the chat. Uh, next application period starts from January 15. Um, actually, is booked out pretty quickly. So there are 600 participants every year, except this year we had to cancel the summer school, but um, yeah, it's usually booked quite quickly. Uh, and there's a um, fee also for the summer school, which it's in comparison quite uh, moderate. And it's, I think it's also uh, eligible for language cl uh, language class a scholarship by the DAD, so check also uh, back with the DAD if um, that could be supported. Um, of course, you're also welcome to come to Heidelberg University for a full program, undergraduate program. Um, we put the application website in the chat. Uh, for you, important to know is that uh, German language proficiency uh, for university entrance is required. Um, so the so-called DSH or other equivalent certificates. There are tuition fees for non-EU EU applicants. And uh, for you to know, uh, there is also the so-called Staatsexamen in Germany. Uh, that's um, a graduation certificate for certain fields of study. Uh, if you want to prepare for uh, a, a career, career in those fields um, in Germany. Duration is three years for the undergraduate program and five to six years, like six years in medicine uh, for the so-called Staatsexamen. Um, for a full BA, uh, MA program, uh, I have to say it would be suitable for those uh, who completed an undergraduate program in a related field. So um, the application procedure and required documents, we again provide you with this information through uh, the chat window. Um, depending on the field, a German language knowledge is required. Uh, but there are also programs that are completely taught in English. Duration is usually two years and tuition fees apply for non-EU applicants. A few words about um, the joint degree in transcultural studies. Uh, so it's a joint program with uh, Kyoto University and it's suitable for holders of a BA degree uh, from a related discipline in the humanities, uh, cultural or social sciences, and the program is completely taught in English. So for application, uh, see the websites of the program at both universities. We put those also in the chat. Uh, there are extended language requirements, so very good English and two more languages, but um, your native tongue is included, so one more foreign language. Uh, so it would be studying each year, uh, one year at each university, 
where rules and regulations of both universities apply to you, what you can gain from it is a master's degree, an MA degree from both universities with writing only one uh, master's thesis. So if you're interested in doing such a program in English, please go to the websites of the joint degree. Just a few words about uh, financial matters. Um, there um, is an administrative fee that all students have to pay. Uh, rent is, I think it actually increased a little, I would say 250 to 450 euro if you um, are living in a student residence. And of course there are your own expenses that depend on your lifestyle if you'd like to travel a lot or have expensive hobbies that would of course be more. So um, actually it's calculated that uh, students uh, should have um, about 861 euro uh, of funding available to them. That would also be the amount that you have to prove when applying for a student visa. Um, just some additional information. Um, so the general application deadlines for our um, full study programs are January 15 or July 15. Uh, please still confirm with your desired field of studies if there are different deadlines or um, examinations or something like that. And general requirements are a high school certificate of graduations. There are some conditions attached to that and uh, eligibility to study at the German university. Uh, so you can also research the details on a German information platform we're also posting to you. So you can check if your certificate of graduation um, is the right thing to, to come to Germany. Tuition fees in at Heidelberg University are 100,500 uh, euro uh, per semester for non-EU citizens. And the administration fees I mentioned before, they apply to all students. Um, so um, if you're interested in um, doing your first steps in research, Heidelberg University might be also a good place for you. So um, in Germany in general, there are two options to do a PhD. Uh, first, uh, a structured program. So you would apply uh, at your desired research facility and um, there may also uh, scholarship opportunities be included. Another form, especially in the humanities, is the individual doctoral studies. So um, you would mm, approach a professor that would be willing to supervise you. Uh, so uh, in this case, funding is most uh, commonly the candidate's own responsibility. You could apply for external scholarships or any other form of, um, of funding. Um, at Heidelberg University, you can find more information at support from the so-called Graduate Acad Academy. We also <coughs> posting their website in the chat for you to read up on that a bit more. And then finally, of course, Heidelberg University is very strong in research. And we also welcome you uh, as a researcher at Heidelberg University. So one good starting point is, for example, the network of your supervisor when you're in the advanced stages of your PhD, or if you already have acquired contacts through conference talks or other research activities. And um, also those from the Hexagon universities, please also make use of this network if you're thinking about a uh, research stay at Heidelberg University. Um, so extended stays, um, you could also look for positions. So you would just go to the website of your subject area, the uh, institution you're interested in and see if they have open positions for uh, researchers or postdocs. So some general advice. Um, Student life in arranging classes is rather free in Heidelberg University and in Germany in general, but it, requir it also requires a responsibility and a lot of personal initiative. So uh, <coughs> the workload and the requirements for self-study, for example, re readings is also comparably high in Germany. So if you're 
planning your curriculum, even just during an exchange stay, keep this in mind. Um, and we really encourage you to actively seek advice before and during your studies. So um, there is the possibility of um, extensive support, but um, please get in touch with us and ask us. Um, and there's also the opportunity to keep in touch after your studies. So Heidelberg University has an international alumni network and um, also a group in Japan. So I think we can also post the links about these uh, in the chat. So um, even if you just start your exchange here at Heidelberg University, you can uh, join those groups. So it's not only for graduates, but also for friends um, of Heidelberg University and also for exchange students. So as I said, we're from the um, Heidelberg University office, Kyoto Heidelberg's representation in Japan. So please do not hesitate to contact us later uh, via phone or email because we're at the moment uh, still closed for drop-in visitors. Uh, we would also be happy to uh, make appointments for a virtual meeting upon request. Just uh, contact us and you'll find our website also um, in the chat. So I'd like this general introduction uh, with, um, I'd like to end this general introduction with Heidelberg University's motto, which is Semper Apertus. I also have it here <laughs> in the back. And it means always open. So first, thank you uh, for listening. And please do not hesitate to also get in touch with us later. And we'll move to the Q&A section of this uh, webinar. Thank you. Now let's move on to the Q&A. So I'd like to read out questions. Uh, -san. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, we actually, uh, many of you uh, actually sent uh, questions already when um, applying for the webinar. So let me just briefly uh, talk about these and um, can we then see how many questions we can answer from? Yes. From the chat, or is there anything urgent? No. <laughs> okay, we so, have about 10 minutes left, so let me just. I think uh, there were also a few general questions that have been uh, asked beforehand. So, um, for example, about admissions um, and general questions about PhD courses, I think we have answered most of these and posted the uh, uh, respective links. Uh, if you have additional questions uh, about this, please uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we had a question about uh, political science, for example. So yes, there is the subject area of political science at Heidelberg University. Um, Ms. Icky, could you send the um, yes. information send about it? the um, Institute for Political Science. So uh, there you'll find uh, more information about this. Then there was also a question, yes, sociology. Uh, you can also study at the Max Weber Institute of Sociology at Heidelberg University, which is actually um, a very good and quite a famous um, department or institution. So there we will also, if you're interested in that, we will also send uh, a link about uh, this. So, and we had another question about um, graduate school and uh, specifically about um, conference interpreting. So, actually, um, there's a master in conference interpreting at Heidelberg University. And uh, if um, your native language um, is Japanese, actually that would be a really good uh, place to go. I think in Germany it's the only place that offers uh, Japanese as one of the languages uh, for this uh, study program. So um, Ms. Iki, please could you also send the um, additional information about the master program in conference interpreting mm -hmm. to, um, to the participants? 
So if there are more questions about that later, please uh, let us know. Um, then we had another question about uh, German as a second language. So um, there are, well, there is a master program at Heidelberg University. So this was for, um, question was for master or higher. Um, so um, maybe for you important to know is that if you want to start from the master's level, as I said in the presentation, you should come from a related field. So um, we'll also send you the link about uh, the subject area uh, of German as a second language. Um, if you're unsure or you're coming from a similar field and you're not sure, please, um, ask the uh, study program advisors directly um, because they know uh, from which field they may accept master's students. Uh, the PhD, as I said before, um, this will mainly depend on you getting in touch with a supervisor who would be willing to support your studies. So I think in uh, German as a second language, um, this would mainly be kind of the course of individual doctoral studies. And uh, so you would have to read up on the professors in that subject area at Heidelberg University and then uh, get in touch with them already with kind of an outline what kind of project you would like to do. And um, yeah. So uh, in general, for those uh, subject specific, specific questions, so each subject area has also their subject areas advisors. So you can also, you're also free to contact them. Um, and um, if you have additional questions about uh, certain subject areas or you're unsure how to get in touch, um, please let us know. And there were a few more general questions that have been sent beforehand. Uh, so how many students attend a class? So um, actually this really depends on the subject area and if it's kind of a lecture or a seminar or a tutorial. Um, actually in some subject areas there are really large groups. For example, at the moment our largest lex lecture rooms can hold uh, one is for 600 people and we have one in chemistry for 620 people and actually uh, there is a new uh, large lecture room under construction at Heidelberg University that will hold 900 people. So that uh, will be our new Audi Max, so the great lecture hall that will also be used for events, not only for uh, studying, but uh, if you're doing a uh, quite specialized seminar that will usually be held in quite small groups. So uh, maybe about five to 25, 30 people at most. Um, we had another question about short term programs. Um, this was actually quite particular about uh, international law, which we offer an MA program in international uh, law that is quite com competitive and it's taught in English and Spanish in cooperation with our offshore campus in, San campus in Santiago de Chile. But as far as I know, there is no short term program. Um, as I said, there's also always uh, the possibility uh, of individual short term or research stays but um, there um, it would be your or your in initiative would be needed to find a supervisor who would be willing to uh, support this. Um, and we had another question about the student colleague. Um, so I was not quite sure um, if this is about the actual subject specific uh, student click or the language classes. So actually at the International Studies Center, the student colleague um, about uh, the subject specific or the subject, subject specific courses 
um, they are usually not suitable for students coming from the Japanese education background because uh, if you are um, at school in the Japanese system, you can directly enter a German university if you have um, certain qualifications. So most students will fulfill those. Uh, the uh, Studien colleague is actually for uh, students who are interested in studying in Germany who come from a background that does not directly enable them to study at a German university. But the International Study Center also offers uh, German classes at the uh, Kolleg für Deutsche Sprache und Kultur. Um, that's where you can prepare for the DSH, so the uh, Certificate uh, for German for University Entrance. So if your question was about uh, this, uh, yes, you're welcome to apply at the, uh, the Center for German Language and Culture. And there is a tuition fee uh, of 1,200 or 500 euro, depending uh, on if you already have been admitted to the study program or not. So there are two uh, tracks. So we will also send the link uh, about the International Study Center. And if you have more questions about this, please to, do not hesitate to let us know. Um, so and there was another question about a uh, German test for enrollment. And as I said before, uh, this will depend on the program if German knowledge is required upon enrollment uh, or if, um, if it's, um, for example, in, on a master's level, if the program is taught in English. So please uh, check on the website for your desired uh, subject areas. Uh, there's also a general overview about this topic uh, of uh, language requirements uh, that can be found on the website of Heidelberg University. So we're sending that to you uh, as a link so you can check on this later. So, and I think we have maybe one, two minutes to three minutes yes. to go into one or two more questions. Um, let me see. So let's just go who, whoever wrote the fastest. Um, so about dormitories for uh, uh, international students, um, you have to apply early. Um, for um, exchange students, um, you have to apply, but you have a guaranteed spot. If you're in a department program or research student or short-term student, please apply very early. So don't wait for your admission letter. Also, if you wanna start a, a BA or MA program, immediately with your application to the university, also apply for a dormitory spot and you can send other material and your official admission letter later. Uh, so it's a little competitive, but uh, we give preference to uh, international uh, students. So I hope this answers your, your question. Um, so there's another question about admission restrictions to economics. Actually, um, please have a look at the website first. And if you have questions about this, I think there are no specific restrictions, but um, um, let us know if you have more questions about uh, this. And uh, yeah, I think um, unfortunately, we're out of time, so um, I have to stop here. There are many more questions. I'm sorry, I will not be able to answer these uh, live here in the webinar. But uh, as I said, uh, please feel free to contact us if you have um, um, like a um, larger need for counseling and so on. We can also make a, a video appointment or write us an email and we will direct you 
to the right person to ask at Heidelberg University. So, uh, and this, this webinar of Heidelberg University now, thank you for listening. Thank you for your questions and we hope to be able to welcome you in Heidelberg soon. Thank you.